All right, so we're going to do a quick video this morning over looking at grid soil sample, um, bringing grid soil sample points to ArcGIS Pro. And we're just going to go ahead and use the last um, project we were working with. Um, if you recall, the last project we were looking at field boundaries, and we also brought in a field boundary from one of my brother's fields down south. So we'll just click on video one, and we'll bring it up here. See where we wind up. All right, so you can see we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's because I was looking around after the video last night, and I really don't know where we're at. So if we don't know that and we want to get to our field boundary, we can right-click, or this is for any feature class, and we can click Zoom to Layer, and it'll take us right to that spot. Um, now for this, uh, my grid soil sample data is in a shape file. Um, it was created by the Cirrus app. Um, I hope to create a video in the future over how I went out and, and soil sampled as well as put these points into a shape file. Um, I think that could be really useful for any crop consultants or maybe farmers that are trying to do this. Um, but for now, um, we'll just go ahead and bring in our grid soil sample points. So we'll go back here and I know what file it's in. So we can open up that. And then here's our field boundary right there. And here is the shape file for all the points. So if we click OK, it'll go ahead and bring in these points and display them. And you can see they're spaced out reasonably even. Um, it's on a two and a half acre grid. And within the grid, I tilted it 45 degrees so that way it could represent the field a little bit better. Um, because if we went sideways, all I had was two lines going right down the middle of the field. I didn't think that was going to be a very good variability or express the variability within the field. So I went ahead and tilted my grid 45 degrees. So that's why you can see the points are going diagonal um, through the field. Now if I was looking at a field that was in the shape of a square, something like this, something a little bit bigger, like this field, um, you could probably stick with your 90 degrees and you'd be just fine. But since we have a really awkwardly shaped field that's long, I went ahead and tilted it. So we went ahead and brought it in. Or brought it in. And if we right click on our feature class we brought in and we go to attribute table, you can see this is all the stuff that came in with the Cirrus app. And you can see there's just about everything you could ever want. And actually, none of my data is inside of here, so we need to go find that data. So, we'll come back in here, go back to lab review, and I'll talk about this later on when we talk about data management, but um, these results were sent to K-State. I got them back and I converted it to a CSV file, so that way pretty much any program can read it. Now what a CSV file is, it's a comma delimited file. Um, if you open up an Excel, it'll look just like an Excel document. You can open up in Word and it'll just look like number, comma, number, comma, and that stands for your columns. So in a future video I'll talk about that a little bit more, but for this we'll just go ahead and bring it in. And we can exit out of this and go to our CSV file and open up our attribute table right there. I just right clicked on this um, this layer right here, or this table I should say, and we can open it up and we can see there's our sample ID, our percent organic matter, and our Malik 3 part per million. And that's all I sampled for this field. Um, if you're a farmer like let's say in Iowa or you know, eastern Kansas, potassium may be an issue for you so you might want to sample for potassium. But in our case, this field is averaging about 500 to 600 part per million potassium. So I did not see the reason of soil sampling for potassium in this field. Because I feel like it would just be really worthless for us because we wouldn't have to apply anything anyway. So why would you do that? So, But we can kind of scroll down here through the Malik 3s. And a sufficiency or a build maintain, I should say, program will recommend yet you build the 20 part per million and that's a non-responsive um, concentration with this Malik 3. 
and we can see that for the majority of our points um, they are just a little bit below 20 some are getting pretty low like this 11 there's an 8 right there but now the issue that we have with what we got going on right now is our data is not in our points so we can't display it so what you're going to do is right click on the layer that you want to bring data into so in this case will be our grid cell sample points and we can come down here to join and relates we'll go to add join and we'll see our geoprocessing add join will show up over here and you could simply um, type an add join in your geoprocessing you probably don't know where this is at right now but in the future videos um, we'll go through that a little bit more so we have our layer name or table so we have our grid soil sample points and for this you can select what you're linking it to so in this case um, we can open up our attribute table of our points um, first off let's look at so we start out with sample ID number one so we can come back up here see what this is going to link up with we can see our field ID starts out with zero so we probably don't want to link up to that one however we come over to our sample ID we can see it's one two three four five six and this is what I labeled the bags when I sent them off to the lab and they sent me back the results with the sample ID one two three four five six so we can go ahead and link this up um, we'll go back to our geoprocessing I just have this pinned to the side if you ever want to pin anything you just click on this little pin button um, since I already have it here it's it's I don't know if it'll get rid of it it may not but I'm not going to click on it for right now so you see our input join is our sample ID this is for our points and we're going to add our table of our Gove County soil test results CSV and we're going to join it based off of our sample ID so we can go ahead and run that I need to, there we go. Alright, so that must have been not been right, sample ID. So now we can replace sample ID. Okay, sample ID, sample ID. Now we can run it. And really, it doesn't look like anything happened. Um, but if we come back to our points, so this is our attribute table for our points. And whenever it adds something, we'll add it to the very end of it. So if we go through all this stuff that Cirrus gave us and get to the very end, we can see that there is the data that I added to it. Sample ID, organic matter, Malik 3. So we'll go ahead and exit out of that. And if we want to see these on the map, we can go ahead and go to labeling up here. And make sure you have your points selected or highlighted just like this. And then we can go here and scroll all the way down to our Malik 3. We can go ahead and label it. So now we can look out in our field and see that this particular um, spot was 19, this one was 11, 11, and so on. So it gives you a nice rip or um, idea on, on what's all going on out in the field just by looking at numbers. Um, so that is pretty much it for this portion of it. Um, it's, this is a little bit of a shorter video, but it pretty much gets the point across on how to link up your soil sampling data with your points. And in a future video, I'll go over more on how you create the CSV file from something a lab may give you, as well as how to um, create these points. And I might actually do this at home. Um, I'll probably grid soil sample some fields. So maybe we'll actually do an in-field um, video over this. At least, especially for these um, soil sampling points. But with that, um, stay tuned for next video. We'll go ahead and make maps of these points. And we'll keep these videos short and sweet. So, yep, we will catch you next time.